Hello, today we will recap a crime thriller movie, in which a cunning legal guardian manipulates the system to exploit elderly individuals, and seize their assets. Before we start, please subscribe to our channel because it is free and simple. Spoilers ahead, watch out and enjoy. The story begins at a care home for the elderly, a place where individuals who are unable to care for themselves due to illness or loneliness reside. A man named Mr. Field Strong attempts to enter without permission, but he's intercepted by the security guard and subsequently handed over to the police. Mr. Strong, during his court appearance, claims that his mother is being kept against her will in the care home, and is being denied access to visitors. Marla Grayson, a cunning manipulator and legal swindler, informs the judge that this man's mother is suffering from severe illness and dementia. Consequently, she argues that the decision to place the elderly woman in a care home was made solely based on the medical recommendations of doctors. She says that his mom gets really scared when she sees Field Strong, and he's even been in fights with the people who take care of her, and the security folks at the care home. The judge agrees with Marla Grayson and makes her the person in charge of the old lady. Field Strong, in his anger, shouts threats and spits outside the court, but Marla doesn't pay much attention to it. But here's the thing, Marla Grayson is not a nice person at all. She doesn't really care about old people. She becomes the guardian of rich elderly people by doing some sneaky stuff, like giving money to doctors and making up fake papers from them. After they're placed in these old age homes, the elderly people lose touch with the world outside. Marla Grayson and her crew take control of their houses, possessions, cars, and savings, all under the pretense of medical care and care home expenses. She's been running this scheme for years and has cheated hundreds of elderly people. Marla also pays a cut of her earnings to Sam, who owns the care home. And with some extra cash, she gets tips from the doctor about another potential victim, this time, a lady named Jennifer Pattinson. The doctor informs Marla that Jennifer is a wealthy elderly woman living alone without a spouse or children. Following their scheme, the doctor gives false testimony in court, claiming that Jennifer is a lonely lady with dementia who can't look after herself. Consequently, the judge appoints Marla as Jennifer's guardian. With the court order in hand, Marla visits Jennifer's home and tells her to come with her to the care home, as the court has assigned Marla as her guardian. After arriving at the care home, Jennifer's phone is taken away from her, and she's restricted from leaving. Jennifer realizes that she's stuck here. After Jennifer is put in her room, Marla and her friends start selling Jennifer's car and everything she owns, and they even try to sell her house. Marla finds a key to a hidden box among Jennifer's things. She goes to the bank, opens the box, and inside, she finds valuable diamonds hidden in a book. Marla thinks she's made a big score. While Frank is busy getting Jennifer's house painted, a man named Alexi arrives in a taxi to pick up Jennifer. Frank tells him that nobody has ordered a taxi from here, and Jennifer doesn't live here anymore. Alexi leaves, confused. When he returns, his boss Roman, a feared criminal, demands to know where his mother is. Alexi explains that when he went to pick up Jennifer, he was told she didn't live there anymore, and all her things were gone. Roman threatens to shoot him, if he doesn't get all the details about his mother in the next few hours. In a hurry, Alexi gathers the information and reports back to Roman. He tells him that his mother is in an old age home because the court says she has dementia. He mentions a woman named Marla as her guardian, and she even sold their house and furniture. Roman contacts his lawyer, Dean, and orders him to retrieve his mother, Jennifer, from the care home immediately. However, he insists that neither his name nor his organization's name should be linked to this matter. Dean arranges a meeting with Marla in her office and confronts her directly. He accuses her of swindling elderly individuals by confining them in the care home and stealing their money. But he insists that Jennifer is not one of her usual victims and demands her release. Marla questions who has sent him, but Dean remains silent on this matter. Dean attempts to negotiate with Marla by offering her a suitcase filled with $150,000 in cash, urging her to accept the money and release Jennifer. However, Marla's greed takes over, and she demands a whopping $5 million for Jennifer's release. Dean issues a stern warning, 
stating that powerful individuals backing Jennifer will make Marla's life extremely difficult if she doesn't free her. Marla dismisses the threat, claiming she's accustomed to such warnings. Dean even challenges Marla in court, but the judge rules in her favor because Dean cannot provide any evidence of Jennifer's relatives. Marla learns something shocking from her friend Frank, who used to be a cop. She tells her that she double-checked Jennifer's background because of Dean. The lady they have isn't Jennifer at all. Jennifer Erickson had died of polio when she was a kid, and this older lady had been using Jennifer's identity for 40 years. This news shakes Marla for a moment, but she doesn't get scared. She goes to the old lady and asks her real name. The lady warns Marla that locking her up here is a huge mistake. While Roman checks his mother's safety deposit box, he realizes the diamonds are gone. He's furious and done with playing it legally. He sends Alexei and two of his guys to the care home with strict orders, get my mother out, no matter what. They arrive at the care home and pretend they want to move their father in. The owner gives them a tour of the place, but Alexei can't find Roman's mother anywhere. Alexei doesn't give up. He attacks the owner and begins searching every room. Eventually, he discovers Roman's mother, but a security guard kills his two companions. Alexei takes the guard's gun and forces the staff to open the main door. However, before he can escape, Marla and Frank apprehend him. With the police present, Roman can't take any action, and his mother is returned to the care home. The police question Alexei, but he remains tight-lipped. Officer informs Marla that Alexei and his two deceased partners have ties to the Russian mafia and extensive criminal backgrounds. Meanwhile, Roman, overwhelmed by anger, takes matters into his own hands and murders the doctor who diagnosed his mother. When news of this murder spreads, Marla realizes that these dangerous individuals are now coming after her too. In a desperate move, Marla and Frank decide to flee the town. However, before they can escape, Roman's henchmen ambush Frank, and they abduct Marla. When Marla awakens, she finds herself bound in a scrapyard, with Roman and his men standing before her. Roman makes it clear that he wants his mother back and those diamonds, or he will harm everyone connected to Marla. Marla, in turn, explains that she doesn't have any personal grudge against him or his mother. She's simply a businesswoman. She then demands a hefty $10 million from Roman in exchange for the safe return of his mother and the diamonds. Roman questions Marla about her fear of death, to which she responds that her greatest fear is poverty. She explains that in this country, you need to have big dreams and ambitions to become wealthy. Roman, understanding that Marla is no longer valuable to him, orders his men to kill her. However, he specifies that her death must appear entirely natural before leaving the scene. While Roman's men tried to make Marla unconscious with chloroform, she quickly memorized his car's number. They then put her in the driver's seat with a bottle of wine, to make it look like she crashed the car into a lake due to drunk driving. But Marla woke up before the car went into the lake, and barely managed to get out in time. Marla heads to a store to get some essentials and changes her clothes there. She writes down Roman's car plate number on her hand so she doesn't forget it. When she returns home, she finds Frank on the floor. Marla struggles to get her to safety just as a gas explosion occurs in their house. After several days of recovery, both of them start getting better. However, Marla hatches a daring plan for revenge against Roman. She confides in Frank, presenting two choices, sell the stolen diamonds and leave the country, or seek revenge against Roman for the assault. Despite the risks, Frank decides to join Marla in her plan. With the help of his police contacts, Frank tracks down the address associated with the number plate Marla had noted. They visit the address, but after observing for an extended period, there's no sign of Roman. As it turns out, they are at the home of Roman's driver. They decide to tail the driver instead. The driver leads them to a parking lot near a building. Marla, disguised with a new hairstyle and look, enters the building and proceeds to the parking lot. There, she incapacitates the driver with a taser, preparing for Roman's arrival. A little while later, Roman arrives at the parking lot with one of his bodyguards. But as they settle into the car, Marla swiftly injects Roman and incapacitates his bodyguard with a taser. She exits the parking lot with Roman and his vehicle, while Frank awaits them outside. 
Together, they head to a remote forest area. There, they set Roman's car ablaze, strip him of all his clothes, and abandon him to face the elements. In the morning, a passerby discovers Roman's lifeless body while out for a jog near the forest. The ambulance transports Roman to the hospital. After several days of unconsciousness, Roman awakens, finding Marla sitting by his bedside. Marla explains to him that local authorities couldn't locate any identification documents for Roman, and due to his need for immediate care, the court appointed her as his guardian. With a tube still in his mouth, Roman is unable to speak. However, as he gradually improves, he invites Marla to meet him. When they finally have an opportunity to talk, Marla reiterates her offer of $10 million to Roman. Roman claims that he can have her killed even after taking his mother and the diamonds. But Marla says she can kill him now if she wants, but money is more important to her. Roman is impressed by her fearless attitude and business mindset, and declares that he is ready to end the fight. Roman suggests that he can make a more significant offer to Marla than the $10 million. He thinks Marla's business model is highly profitable and can be expanded into multiple legal income streams, not only should it expand within one city but also into other states across America. Therefore, he proposes a 50% partnership with her. Recognizing the lucrative opportunity, Marla agrees and releases Roman's mother. They divide the diamonds and invest the money in their businesses. Following Roman's proposal, they used his funds and Marla Grayson's expertise to establish multiple elderly care facilities and employed numerous legal guardians. Marla Grayson's company thrived nationwide and soon became a prominent feature in magazines. And Marla was invited to speak about her success on major news channels. One day, after one of her interviews on the TV channel, Marla exits the building and encounters Mr. Field Strong, the man we saw at the beginning of the movie. He points a gun at Marla and shoots her. He explains that he had been estranged from his mother for years due to Marla and her business, and today his mother passed away in a care home without ever meeting him. In his eyes, Marla deserved to die. With this, Marla takes her last breaths in Frank's arms, despite having amassed immense wealth. After exploiting so many elderly individuals and taking their lifelong savings, this is likely the fate that awaited Marla. So that's for today. Please subscribe to our channel if you like this video, and rate this recap 1 to 10 below, comment answer.